Hi, how's it going? Um, this is the fourth installment of the organic chemistry series I've been doing. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Diels-Adler reaction, which adds a diene to a dienophile to make a cyclic structure. But uh, before we get into that and talk about the main point of today, I wanted to talk to you about textbooks in organic chemistry. Now, almost as important as your professor is your textbook, because you're going to be spending a lot of time with the book. Three hours for every one hour you're in class. It's a long time. I mean, I used to pretty much sleep next to my organic textbook. You know, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and start reading it if I, you know, you wake up for like a glass of water or something in the middle of the night. But anyway, um, my first book for organic one, which can also be used for organic two, but the university decided to change books in the middle of the year, I don't know why, but um, was the Graham Solomon Craig Frile book. This is the seventh edition. Now, I'm sure since I took the class, it's probably like a tenth or eleventh edition, or you know, there's a better edition out there. But and this is the Francis Carey book that I use for organic too. I actually this is the fifth edition, by the way. I actually, when I took organic two, fell back on my uh, Graham Solomon book a lot, just because it's better written. Um, in my opinion. The explanation is clearer, and I feel like the the Francis Carey book they just it's text, and, you know, in the sense that you know this is how it's done, and that's it, and here's a picture. But in the Graham Solomon book, there's step by step, you know, like this reaction. Here's a complete mechanism, and this happens. This is why it happens, and it also gives a lot of practical applications, which is great because you need that. You need a lot of visual stimulus in your organic book because as you know, organic chemistry is more of a visual science than most other sciences. You have to see the molecules and see how they're reacting. Um, I keep both as a reference, but I always prefer the Graham Solomon one. Of course, I have <laughs> this one. Someone, some girl wrote that in my book. I don't, I don't remember who she was because I was studying organic chemistry. But the chemistry is more important. We know that. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's go to the marker board. All right, now I said that we'd be talking about the Diels-Adler equation. Um, a diene, as the name implies, I talked about alkenes in, like, I believe, the first or second video. Alkenes have two pi bonds, just double bond. Now, a diene has four pi bonds. And I believe the most common example that you'll find in any organic book would be, and I found it both of mine, were, was 1,3-butadiene. And it's in the cis state, not the, opposed to the trans state, which is like this. But anyway, as you can see, I drew this in bond line formula. If I were to draw it out, it would look like this. CH2, CH double bond, CH, CH2. Now, 1,3-butadiene uh, one, one, has four pi bonds. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sacrificing two pi bonds to make two sigma bonds. Now, we're going to add it to ethene, which is a dienophile. And as the name implies, phile meaning loving, so it loves dienes, like hydrophilic, water loving. Now, what we're going to do, this is not the mechanism, by the way, this is moving of electrons. Electron is going to move here, here, and this is going to flip up. So what we're going to wind up with is cyclohexene. And this reaction is energetically favorable just because the two sigma bonds that we are forming are more uh, stable than the two pi bonds that we're sacrificing. So this reaction is going to take place under about 200 degrees Celsius or if you prefer to use the Kelvin scale like I do, you can say 473 degrees Kelvin. Um, it's going to take place under pressure, and it is reversible. It's not, a bit, it's not as favorable to reverse it, so a smaller arrow. But um, this is the most common example you're going to find. Your organic professor, if, if he or she is uh, a kind soul, might give you this on the test. It's kind of like a freebie, but if uh, they're anything like my old professor, I'll give you some ridiculous 
20 carbon molecule that, you know, you didn't believe could exist in nature. So let's try to do one just for fun, see what would happen. All right. I'm just making this up as I go. So we got our let's see, we got our diene and our dienophile, and you approach it the same way. We're just going to use the arrows that are going to move counterclockwise to move the electrons. So this guy's going to go here. This one's going to go here. Actually, when I say here, it's going to flip out, and this one's going to go here. So when we add these together. I'm going to get like this. It's best not to panic during the test, because you, you probably will if you see some ridiculous 100 carbon molecule. But basically, we're going to form something that looks similar to this. Um, this may not be the exact reaction. I didn't look at all the possible, like, favorable bonds, but I believe this would be your, pretty much your major product. And let's see if we can name that. This would be... Okay, next time we're going to also talk about para, ortha, and meta, because there is a specific way of naming uh, substituents on a ring, uh, or cyclohexane or benzene ring, or phenyl ring. But um, we'll get into that next time. But anyway, I am going to make a fifth video, hopefully, tonight. I'm incredibly bored. And I'm going to talk about enantiomers, and then maybe we'll talk about the naming of substituents on the ring. Until then, keep studying, and thanks for watching.